All right. Well, welcome everyone to our Q&A with Click webinar series. We're very excited with us today. This is actually our last session for 2021. So we're glad you're all joining us. Um, some of you may have been familiar with our support webinar, Talk to Experts Tuesday. This is the same thing. We just rebranded it to um, better highlight what it's all about. And that is a live question and answer session with our Click text first. Um, you can use this time to ask a question on our featured topic and hopefully get to know some of the good people here at Click. On that note, I am Katie Davis and I will be your moderator for this session. I'm a senior community program manager on our customer success experience programs team. So basically my team is here to make sure our Click users have the best possible digital experience and resources to be successful with our tools. I'm located outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's in the Northeast of the United States. Um, we're definitely getting that winter weather around here. Um, and I'm joined by Jamie Gregory, who's just south of me on the East Coast and a slightly warmer weather, but still cold, uh, <laughs> who will be a friendly face to all of you. Uh, she has moderated all of the past Talk to Expert Tuesday sessions, and she'll help keep an eye on me and on the questions um, to make sure that um, she sees everything coming in and remind me of anything that I, I forget to say. So, Jamie, do you want to say hi and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I apologize if my audio is in and out or anything like that. I, I have some processes running in the background and that are taking up a lot of resources. Uh, but my name is Jamie Gregory. I'm the Community Operations Manager here at Click under Customer Marketing. Um, I've been with Click for about four years now. And I am, as in Katie said, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so we're just thrilled to have you all here today. And I hope you enjoy today's session. Great. Thanks, Jamie. Now, before I introduce our other panelists, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items for the session. So everyone right now, you're currently on mute. And we ask that you type your question in the Q&A panel. It should be right below. Um, you have an option to ask a question to everyone, our hosts and panelists. Um, we will not necessarily be using the panel to respond to your question. Um, we'll be answering it live. So hopefully we can get to everyone today. If not, we'll follow up with, with the necessary answers. Um, you should receive a prompt for survey after this. So please go ahead and take it. It takes less than a minute. It's about four questions. And I think come 2022, we're boiling it down to even two questions. So it'll be even easier. Uh, let us know what you like, what you don't like. Uh, and even share future topics you'd like to hear about. We had some really great suggestions in the past, and it can range from anything from product specific, functionality focused, anything that is top of mind for you. We wanna hear it and we wanna address it. Um, if you don't receive a prompt for the survey, you can email us at digitalatclick.com. Um, or if you think of a topic later, you can email us. I know often things come to me at a later time, so feel free to use that resource. Um, keep in mind that even though we have Click experts on the line and they are pretty great experts, um, we will not be answering any of your questions regarding a specific open case. And we ask you just keep the questions relevant to today's topic, which is of course, refining reports and visualizations. We wanted to make sure that you were all in tip-top shape as we enter the season of year-end reporting in a past life. And by past life, I mean like five years ago, I was a financial controller. So I really empathize for all of those going through that year-end reporting season. Um, I know what it's like to have to deliver on reports on a quick deadline, report and present to senior management. Um, so hopefully the session today will get you all started off on the right foot. Um, all right, so we have a great panel of experts today, truly the best of the best in my opinion. Um, and I'm very thankful they were all so kind to give us an hour of their time. I'll list them off real quick, then I'll ask each of them to introduce themselves and to put them further on the spot I'm also going to ask them to share their click reporting or visualization hack, which could be any tool feature that they just absolutely could not live without. 
Um, so to list them off, we have Andrea Bertazzo, a senior technical support engineer, Frank Savino, principal technical support engineer, Jonathan Poole, master principal enterprise architect, Stephen Jasinowski, a senior product designer, and Patrick Nordstrom, director of product management. So let's start with the, uh, the intros. Andrea, do you want to kick it off? Yes, thank you very much, Katie. Uh, I'm Andrea. I'm working uh, in Creek since uh, more or less six years. So uh, after the acquisition of imprinting, I was working on imprinting team before, together with uh, Stephen and Frank. Uh, since the acquisition, I'm focusing especially on design, uh, on imprinting still, but also in ClickSense and ClickView, and now on the cloud. That's great. Thank you. All right, Frank, you're up next. Hi, I'm like uh, Andrea Bertazzo and Steven Jasinowski as well. I also have been here with Click since six years, and we came from Zuby and Printing. Since then, we've been with Click. January, actually, it's been literally January uh, 2015, so we're six years coming up. Um, my favorite hack. I don't think I have a favorite one. Um, I think it's all pretty cool. So yeah, um, that's it. All right, thank you. And Andrea, do you have a favorite hack or uh, something that you can't live without when it comes to reporting? Uh, no, not. I don't have a favorite one. Really, they are all really nice. All right, <laughs> all useful. All right, so then we're going to bring it around to Jonathan. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, I go by Johnny. I've been with Click about 10 years now. Um, and I work in pre-sales, uh, so I am a technical support for, pre uh, for our sales organization. I have a fair bit of experience with imprinting, as well as ClickView and ClickSense, and now SaaS. Um, my favorite hack, um, most of them are hacks, so they always come with like little baggage. Um, I guess my most recent favorite one would be the imprinting governance dashboard. Uh, that was a fun challenge to build about two years ago. Um, yeah, that's about it. Happy to be here and answering questions today. Thank you. Thanks. All right, Stephen, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So uh, Stephen Jasnowski, uh, again, I came over with the Vizubi team along with Frank, Andre, and a bunch of other uh, good people. Um, within Click, I've been in pre-sales, product management, product design, all continuing to remain a, a focus around reporting at Click. Um, I would say I'll bring up two hacks uh, to cover for both Frank and Andrea. And, and one of them, Johnny, I'm surprised you didn't mention this since you were really the driver behind this. And maybe it's because it's a little bit older by now. But the ability to use the APIs to kick off reporting workflows, uh, something that we don't have in the management console, but to use the APIs instead to reload documents, make checks to make sure that reload process is finished, generating the reports, uh, was really a, a stroke of genius by Johnny to set all that up. In terms of maybe a little more minor hack, um, you know, in the end printing designer, there are a number of different properties, configurations you can make. Uh, one that I particularly like is with straight tables, you can limit the number of rows to the first N rows. So that means if you have a straight table in your, uh, your app that has hundreds of rows, but you really only want the top five or top 10, you don't have to create a new table inside of your app. You can do that directly in the template editor uh, with end printing and just limit it to those end rows. So that's maybe a, a little hidden one that, that you might have to do a little bit digging to find. It's really helpful. I think I saw one of those questions floating around community as well. So I'm sure a lot of people would love to see that hack. All right, last but not least, we have Patrick Nordstrom. So Patrick, feel free to introduce yourself. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so I've been with Click since 2017 with the acquisition of Idevio. Um, so I keep uh, um, my herd is the data visualizations or the uh, the charts in ClickSense, not only the the map uh, which was used to be my home space, but now I do uh, all of the charts. And um, 
I'm actually doing 24 days of visualization up until uh, Christmas. I wonder why I signed up for that uh, challenge, <laughs> but I'm doing that right now. So perhaps I can share my first one with you. If you, if you don't hang out yeah. on LinkedIn, you That'd might already have seen it. Let's see, which screen am I sharing? So do you see uh, ClickSense oh, app me, now? Let me stop sharing and see if it'll go through. But I will add, definitely um, follow Patrick on LinkedIn because he's showing some really great visualizations out there. So I do something like that. Maybe you can see my screen now. Yep. Yeah, cool. So one of the things that um, I like to bring up is um, when you people pay more attention to titles and the text in your shorts than you actually think they are, or at least I thought. Um, people are spending perhaps 50% of the time, half of the time reading the text and not looking at the chart. So that is a good excuse. Um, that is a good reason to put something more elegant or something more descriptive or something more telling in the title than just uh, going for the dimension and the measure. That's, uh, that is, well, that's what I used to do back in the days. Um, but you can actually use the, the engine and you can... You, you don't have to resort to that. You could do something, build a more dynamic title. So for instance, going back to what you actually show in a, in a line chart, you're probably interested in the in how the, uh, the figures have varied over, over from period to period or over the whole time period. And if you use uh, ClickSense and you make it dynamic, so even if I make uh, changes, it will... Uh, um, uh, the title and the text will correspond or will change as I do selections. And also if I reload the app with new data, it will still be uh, still be valid. When you're constructing an app, you might not be sure of what you want to, what the data will actually tell you. Uh, but if you go back to uh, a line chart, for instance, the, you can capture the essence. In this case, case I'm using... Uh, whether sales is going up or down or and uh, for the pie chart i'm i'm decided to bring out which uh, which uh, category is the largest one the same with the bar charts that you could instead use um, uh, a title that more tells you more about the compared to uh, if you just use a plain one so that's my favorite one right now that's great. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I see that we have a question in the Q&A panel. So people keep on submitting your questions below. Um, from Adam, they're asking, is the ClickView to ClickSense converter being updated to take advantage of the new visualizations available in ClickSense today? So who wants to tackle that? Uh, this is, yeah, this is Johnny. That'll, I mean, is it being updated? It hasn't been updated. It has not. So speaking to the product as is, it, it has not been updated to, um, to uh, handle new visualizations that have appeared. Um, as to whether it will be updated is a roadmap question, which is outside the scope today. Um, but um, please, you know, submit your idea uh, and others vote for it. Um, personally, I see a lot of value in having an enhanced converter to make the switch over easier, uh, both for SaaS and to ClickSense Client Management Windows. So whichever your direction is, going full SaaS or going to ClickSense Client Manage, please, uh, please submit your idea and vote on it. And I will add uh, where he said, submit your idea. That means on community, if you go into ideation, um, you can suggest ideas and people can um, like and put it and the ones that get the most attention um, are definitely reviewed and and um, looked at by our our r d and product teams um, to see if we can uh, go about that all right sorry it's taken a while to load the link in the right in there the chat. community uh, we'll, we'll paste the link 
Yeah. yeah it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, Just really quick too, Katie. Um, you do have to be logged in to suggest an idea and you do have to be a customer Thank partner you. or luminary. Steven, you want to answer that one? Can you tell us something about roadmap of click reporting services in SAS? Is that? It's a question. Yeah. Uh, the question. Something yeah, it's another question that roadmap. popped up. Yeah, so so I mean, we do have the at least the big news today for the click reporting services being available using uh, automation, and initially this will support PDF outputs uh, using Click Send Sheets, but a lot of different potential with the automation and some of the blocks that we already have in there that allow you to do things like looping over dimensions uh, to generate different sheets, customization of emails, so really a lot of very cool reporting features. I don't want to say we're getting for free, but are already incorporated as part of automation and automation templates that can now be used with reporting. As far as building out the roadmap, uh, I don't have anything concrete other than that we know we need to support more output types uh, and more types of templates. So those will be the next steps as we move forward. But today is, is obviously the first major step uh, in that process. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to jump into questions that we got from the registration. Uh, the first one is how to customize color with multiple measures in a stack bar chart. Um, so this might be on up Patrick's alley. Yes, that's mine. <laughs> so share screen. Oh, here, let me stop sharing. Yep. So. Um, that one over here. That. So uh, the combo chart has been uh, going through a lot of, first, do you see my screen? <laughs> Sorry. Yep, we see yes, it. Yes, we can see it. Cool. Uh, so uh, the combo chart has been improved uh, uh, during this summer. And uh, one of the things that we added is the ability to color per measure. So normally when you use a, uh, a click chart, you have the colors on a chart level, and then you would have only one color function for, for all of your, um, um, uh, uh, for all of your um, measures, which doesn't really go well if you want to make something uh, really complex, like in or really complex, We're quite complex in this case. I want to use two different uh, color functions: one for the actual values up until September, and then gray for forecast. And then I want to have some kind of trend line on top with a different coloring. So we added, we changed things around a bit. So you will now have a more properties under the measures. And if you switch that, click on that one, you will switch in a new panel, which gives you more uh, uh, opportunities to set in, uh, to, um, to adjust things, what kind of uh, measure, you, what kind of visualization you want for that measure. And you can also set a custom uh, ex color uh, expression. And that allows you to do things like I just uh, uh, described, but it also allows you to do, uh, the combo chart also had functions for doing bars on the secondary axis uh, like this. Uh, since the question was about the stacked bar chart, so that is one of the things that the combo chart uh, can't do with a, with a dimension, but I can show you how to do, uh, do that in um, uh, uh, in, in the combo chart. What you have to do, uh, then you have to create, uh, you can stack a combo chart if you create separate measures and that will allow you to have different uh, type of colors but you need to have instead of having a dimensions that you stack with you have different measures that you stack upon yep and i'm just asking it might be frozen my on my end but um i see the click sense desktop apps don't see any movement are we on the right screen uh, or is it on my end? no probably, probably. not <laughs> I think you're sharing the wrong screen, Patrick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we were listening. It was such and it a sounded beginner's great. mistake. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is what I want to show. So the, it's a combo short that can have different color expressions, one for the uh, for the bars and one for the uh, trend line over here. 
and you do it by setting things under the measure and you click on more properties and under more properties you have a color section. If you want to stack a combo chart, you have to add additional uh, measures. Uh, you can't stack it on uh, based on uh, 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 on a dimension, but you can stack it by using uh, measures instead. So, and then you will be able to have different uh, colors for uh, for each one of the uh, one of the measures that you stack with instead. Right. There's also another that might be aligned with this. It says, why can we not define the colors of a measure or dimension in a chart, not over master, master items? Yeah, so we can take that one at the same time. Uh, so right. let's go to uh, that one, for instance. Uh, so the question is, how do I change the, the, the axis labels and the, uh, perhaps the value labels? And you do that with a uh, custom theme. So here's, you define what kind of label, um, what kind of color, what kind of font size. You can even set the font family if you want to use Comic Sans. If you want to have a less professional look on your, on your dashboard, you can set a different uh, font family. So if I go in here, change the theme to that theme or theme. And oh, I get this beautiful yellow color for the axis. I get larger values for, uh, for the uh, uh, larger font size for the value labels. As you yeah. see here, I'm using uh, segment uh, labels and they will, and since I have a, such a blue color, uh, we are using white color in this case. It's great, so much more customized. This is, I mean, um, uh, if you have followed the uh, the development of uh, ClickSense visualizations, you have, might have seen that we have added a lot of properties, and many properties we uh, we picked from the custom theme settings. So this is something that we want to continue with, and I hope in the beginning of the spring we will be able to set more common properties on the such as the title, the subtitle, the footer, the axis. Um, and want to uh, to control these per chart inside of the uh, uh, inside of the app in conjunction or in as a complement to set it with the um, uh, with the theme. Right, and um, I also see that Alfred commented, "We want dynamic colors like in Click View." Uh, <laughs> so Rainbow that's colors. that's great feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so as you could see uh, from the um, uh, from the combo chart experience, I put in an expression, a color by expression, where I added an expression. So if I want to have a randomized color, I could create such a color expression that would give me a new color every time I uh, enter the sheet. So yes, it's uh, possible. You can hack away and have super dynamic. Uh, colors in the combo chart as of August client manage or I think uh, SAS already had it in uh, July so uh, there's um, I would say most of our charts already today support color by expression so there's uh, there's a lot of opportunities to do that that's awesome and I but also see Patrick that focused. you replied yeah yeah, yeah. I see that you replied in the chat to a question about um, titles. So I was wondering if you could share that with the group and kind of talk about yeah, the article you linked. Yeah, that was my favorite. Yeah, this was my first favorite hack. So that one, right. uh, so somebody asked exactly how you're doing that. And I've already documented that in the top 10 app number five. So I just sent the link. Awesome. You want to dive yeah. into the expressions that I created there. I will send that to everyone to do it. Um, all right, let's get back to questions. We have more from the registration. I'm pulling it up now. All right. Um, oh, this is along the same line, but I'm sure it's the, the a similar way to what you were doing. How do we customize font co color and, si and size in labels? So this is specific to the labels of the charts. Yeah, so that's what I showed with uh, with a custom theme. So the axis 
uh, there are settings. Uh, maybe I can sh share anyway. So there is a section on the help site called getting started uh, building uh, custom themes. And uh, here's a lot of interesting settings that you could uh, that you could style. So here's how you're styling the title, the subtitle and the footer, as well as the labels. So it's very uh, for those of you who like um, uh, coding expressions, you might be uh, enjoy also hacking away on the JSON structure that uh, controls the custom themes. And this is how we do it today. Um, I hope to be able to add more app settings or short settings for, for this, uh, this coming spring. But it depends a bit uh, on uh, the priorities and the roadmap, how much uh, uh, if I get to decide, everybody at Click should be working on visualizations. But um, there might be some that would like some, uh, some work being done on the reports also. So I have to share. So not everybody could use work on the visualizations. But uh, we'll see what kind of uh, things we will be able to deliver after New Year. Great, thanks. All right, so we have a new question from Luigi. Will it ever be possible to set the worksheet grid line to the option narrow as default? Or is so, it possible now? Mm, so I guess the, uh, the, the question is uh, how to set it by default. Um, so uh, there's three options on the grid size today. It's uh, wide, narrow, and medium, I think. Uh, we might be able to uh, add even more settings for, uh, for the grid in the future. Um, I think the, we underestimate the power of the grid. Uh, web designers have been using grids for, uh, or grid-based design for a very long time. And there's, there's a lot of, thoughts going into when you design a dashboard to to use uh, use the grid uh, uh, properly and uh, i think uh, in most cases uh, people do not pay attention so much to the grid and uh, 12 by 12 grid is probably uh, something that's uh, uh, quite useful and we offer some uh, some uh, uh, some options to it but i think we could use um, I probably will do a, a, a top 10 uh, tip later on on how to use the, the grid more uh, effectively. But I'm, I'm not ruling out that we should have a default value for, uh, for the grid that you can customize. But uh, for now, I haven't seen that much um, uh, share for it at the ideation forums. So if you like that idea and you want to... Uh, to uh, um, um have a say see if there's more people who like that okay and we also we keep on getting these color questions so I, it must be important for those it says would it also be possible to set colors in the theme by default yeah so definitely you can already set the th uh, colors in the theme um so if you uh if you uh, yeah, so you definitely can create custom color palettes in the in in the themes. So here's how you do that. So, so you dis you can also set up the different palettes as you and you can also define the color scales. So you it's definitely possible today. Uh, when um, because uh, that was uh, one of the things that I was showing today at the, my my tip for 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 today was how to do that in in uh, in uh, click sense. So my best tip for creating a quick way to create a new uh, a new palette in in click sense is to use the the master dimensions. Uh, maybe I should use another. Sorry about that. So under master dimensions, uh, uh, there's uh, if you create a master dimension, you also have this um, setting called value colors. And here you can go in and pick a color for each one of your categories. That is a super quick way to create the palette that you like. 
And you can also, if you want to have a color scale instead, that you're, uh, you, you want to create a, uh, like a gradient, uh, and then you will probably want to attach the colors to the measure, and then, then you go in under segment colors. And you define the limits, and you define the colors that uh, you should use. And the great benefit of using colors in monster items like this is that every time you use a dimension in one of your charts, it will, you will have the option to, to use that color uh, for that chart. So if you go in and change the monster items, it will automatically change for all of your charts in, in that app. Uh, and that is a good thing because if you're using different colors in a dashboard for each one of your charts, it will be a very confusing impression to the end user. Uh, he will not know what you mean with the colors. People overuse the colors and, and um, uh, you will have to create a lot of legend objects. That's, that's not really not necessary. So uh, the quickest way to create uh, your own custom colors in a, in a nice controlled manner is to use the master item colors, the segment colors and the, and the value colors. I think there's some audio difficulties with Katie. Yeah, I lost her too. Oh, it looks like she's she gone. Just got, yep. She's gone. All right. Well, there, we'll just continue on. All right. So let's go on. Um, let's go to the next question that we have. Um, so what advice are you able to provide a junior data analyst on techniques available to implement data visualizations? Yeah, I can take that one. So at our website, we have a great, uh, a, a great piece of um, uh, assets for data visualizations. One of them is the uh, Patrick Lundblad's blog on data visualizations. He has more than thirty articles uh, about. Uh, it's it's not really uh, sense specific or tool specific. It's very generic or general thoughts on how to use the data visualization and data visualization um, best practices. Uh, we also have the click design blog uh, where the demo team and others write uh, about data visualization, such as uh, uh, the importance to use a silent legend, for instance. So there's, there's a lot of, I hope to be able to uh, gather all these uh, assets together as a good uh, as a as a good entry page. But right now you have to you have to visit the blog and you have to go to the. Um, I can share. It's it's uh, actually a community. It's a corporate blog. I can send you the link in the chat. That's the design blog, and this is the uh, Patrick uh, data visualization blog. If you want to click on that one, I sent it in the chat, Jamie. Okay. Let's see. I'm, I'm uh, happy to take the next question, which is once I put my visualizations into storytelling, I can't refresh it. My data changed every day. Anything I can do here? Um, so if you are using charts and snapshots and storytelling, there's there's nothing you can do there. I mean, the intent of the feature is supposed to be you're documenting an analysis and telling a narrative and creating a narrative around that. So uh, we do have users that uh, and customers that are trying to use this more as a, a templated means of creating an artifact, which is refreshing the charts and the data that are in there. So there's nothing directly that you can do uh, today. The only thing that is somewhat of a workaround and this will work for sheets, but not for charts and snapshots. If you use an embedded sheet inside of your story, that sheet is quote unquote live anytime you open it. So that will always reflect the most recent data, uh, but that is only with embedded sheets. It will not work with charts or snapshots. Since this is uh, a fairly common uh, request for the capability, again, as we've urged uh, many times on this call, please go to the ideation site uh, search to see if other people are already requesting this. I'm sure that something already exists for stories and the refreshability. And then either tack on another vote, or if you can't find the idea, uh, enter one yourself, because it is something that we do hear from a lot of customers. Perfect. Steven, can you guys hear me? Still a little bit yes. on my end. <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> Jamie, take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Stephen, really quick, which question was that that you just answered? That was the question around storytelling and refreshing the, mm -hmm. the data visualizations in there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So once again, everyone, ideation is out here on Click Community. And we can, as uh, Stephen said, suggest an idea. Make sure you search first and then share the link if you're really that passionate about it and you want to see it in the product. Share it with your colleagues and your peers that you know would be interested in having the same feature as well. Um, like I said earlier, you do have to be a customer partner or luminary to suggest an idea. But our product managers take a look at these ideas every couple of weeks. And so they really do value you value your opinion. So please, you know, let us know what you'd like to see. Um, something else that I just wanted to bring up really quickly is I did put it in the chat at the very beginning of the session, uh, but we do have the opportunity to give some click swag out today. So if you would like the opportunity to win that click swag, uh, please fill out the survey and let us know how the session, uh, we've had a few kinks today. Don't, don't, you know, be too hard on us for all of that, but just let us know what you like about the session. Um, if you have any topic ideas, and then of course you can always give some of our amazing panelists Analyst some shout outs, which we do um, we do let everyone in the company know that that uh, that they did get those shout outs. So please uh, take the time to fill out the surveys. Katie mentioned it does take you know about a minute less than uh, and it, it does provide valuable feedback for us for future sessions. All right, I think I'm sharing. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing right now. Um, go ahead and get your questions in. We're, we have about 20 minutes left in today's session. So if you have any more questions for our panelists, uh, just let us know, use the Q&A panel. They're happy to answer your questions. Um, and then uh, let's see, the next question is, how to set background colors and tables by master item? Always the same uh, background color by master item. Yeah, so the tables, the background colors, you set by a color expression. So it's not controlled by a master item yet. So you can't uh, do color by measure or color by dimension inside of the table. So it's just the um, more advanced setting, the, the color by expression. This might change in the future. We are right now working on new versions of the tables, both the pivot table and the straight table. And there might be additional options for, for coloring in, uh, in the future. Perfect. Thank you, Patrick. All right. So next question, um, I'm trying to download Click and Printing Designer and get it installed in my machine, but I can only see download personal desktop version of Click. Uh, and that I tried to sign up with my company email, but the email verification, I haven't received it yet. Yeah, so um, there is no uh, dedicate or uh, standalone version of the imprinting designer. Um, you need to actually in, uh, request a trial from a, from a from a Click account manager, um, and then you need to download the imprinting server. Now you don't need the ClickView server for this. Uh, it's a good idea uh, if you do want to do uh, real life. A trial testing, uh, but you can get away with just the ClickView desktop. If you don't have ClickSense, again, you can just get by with the ClickView desktop. That ClickView desktop would need to be licensed. Uh, you would have to have a ClickView desktop license, but you, there's no standalone de designer. You'd actually have to install the imprinting server and the imprinting designer software, as well as at the very least one ClickView desktop that comes that you would also need a ClickView desktop trial license for. Perfect. I think we have some information about just kind of planning in general. So I'll go ahead and put that in the chat for everyone. And then. I and I think the there's also, um, the, there was a question in there about, uh, I, I think it just remind uh, the uh, the audience that you need to have an account in in the community or uh, with Click to perform a download. But um, yeah. Um. 
Yeah, you do have to have the appropriate access to reach the downloads um, site, um, not to reach it, but to log in and get to the actual downloads. You do have to be associated with an account um, and everything like that. So if you if you log into the downloads portal and you just have you know free versions or personal editions of ClickView or something like that, um, there may be an issue with the access that you have. Uh, for that, my suggestion would be to um, probably the easiest way is to hop on Click Community. Um, if you're signed into Click Community, you can start a chat, um, and then you can reach an agent, and they can help you out and get you the appropriate access that you need. Um, if you haven't seen the, the new chat, we did have a, a session on it uh, about a month ago or in October, a couple months ago. And let me just show you really quick um, here on the support section. It's only on the support section right now of Click Community. But it is this little help bubble here in the bottom right hand corner. And you can see it throughout all, all of the support pages here. But as this blue um, help button is our chat functionality. So you can um, start a conversation with our chat bot and then you can also get directed to an agent that way and they, they should be able to assist you. Okay. Let's see. The next question is, um, I have a click sent sheet that has data in the form of tables, just like Excel. I have another app where I want to create charts to visualize data from the sheet. How do I connect these two sheets or apps together? So it looks like they um, have an app that has just data and tables, but so they want like to create another app off of that app. So, I mean, I'm not sure if I fully understand it, but uh, usually yeah. you just uh, load the Excel files and the click will help you or sense will help you join that together in memory. Uh, if they have an existing app they want to uh, harvest from, they could use binary load of that app to get access of, uh, of the data inside of the app. Uh, just remember to put the binary load statement first in the app. I tend to forget that. <laughs> it's an important step. Yeah. I did put um, some information in the chat about binary load. Um, so if you have any questions about that, just let us know. Um, I don't know if we have the exact experts on the call for that, but we can try to get your question answered and um, get back to you. Hi, Katie, are you back? Oh, no. How do, how do I sound? Better. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It happens. Yeah. I see we have another question in the chat. Um, it looks like one for Patrick, if Patrick's willing to answer. <laughs> it says, is it planned to bring CSS hacks as simple checkbox check options into the objects? For example, switching off the dimensions in the pivot table. Yeah, so that is the uh, the downside of doing uh, too much engine gymnastics and CSS hacks that people tend to think that that's the only thing you can do in, in sense, but people tend to ask me impossible questions, but uh, um, I actually seen a prototype for the new pivot table that's coming and uh, uh, the buttons that are quite useful if you want to do uh, filtering and uh, work with the pivot table probably a bit annoying if you're an accountant and want to see what the, the column header is, because the, if you have like a thousand buttons, it's kind of hard to match the button to the, uh, to the header. And the new version will actually have a header and not button, buttons. So you will not be, have to resort to CSS uh, hacks to, to do that. Actually, many of the things that people ask for and people are uh, upset with and ask for in the community uh, in ideation, we try to come up with a workaround until we have found a way to do it in a more uh, controlled manner, such as the highlighting of rows when you are hovering in the table. That was a CSS hack in the beginning. Uh, the, uh, the possibility to increase the, the scroll bar, uh, bar size. 
So many of the things that you you ask for, you could see that progress if you download my uh, hack uh, apps, you can see that I put in some pointers. This was replaced by built-in functionality then and then, such as, for instance, when we introduce spark lines in the tables, then the old Unicode hack of uh, adding uh, shards went away. Or it's still there, but you, you could use the internal spark lines instead. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Am I still with everyone? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm looking at some of our questions. Um, it says we have a age column in a table after download the data from the table to Excel file, the format of the data was changed to currency, which looks very strange. Is there any setting for download data format? Thanks. You can change the data format uh, when, uh, when the data is, is downloaded. For example, you can force uh, uh, the conversion to the data to numeric uh, or, um, or any other kind of using uh, click sense formulas. For example, if you need to be sure that your data are numeric, you can just put uh, a num before. So they are converted to numbers uh, and you can do this also for the other kind of formats. It may happen uh, in some cases that uh, data formatting is not exactly what you expect because maybe data are interpreted by click sense in a different way than they are interpreted in uh, Excel, or because you are maybe you are using um, a, a dot or instead of a comma in uh, for separating units uh, uh, from decimal numbers uh, or vice versa. So it may happen that you don't have exactly the same format that you want, but you can always convert it. All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to ask. Another question, just because it's export lines, um, is there a way to programmatically export the underlying data of a, a visualization? So I have a visualization and I would like to pull it out and dump it as a CSV using the API in some way. Yeah, so if, it's, if you want to do that, uh, you can use a, if you have access to inprinting, um, you can actually export uh, your chart uh, as a CSV using a click, uh, an entity report, an, uh, an imprinting entity report. Okay, so there's no designer associated with the entity report. You basically, you take your object and you create a new report in imprinting. You take the object that you want to export as a CSV, and then you create a, a, basically you create a published task with CSV export output format, and then uh, you schedule the published task. Now, that being said, there is a tool. Now that you have the report created up to export a CSV using imprinting, you can turn around and use the imprinting APIs to execute a published task. So you can create your report. So if you want to do this programmatically, you can then use the imprinting APIs to execute a published task uh, use, uh, uh, and schedule the uh, schedule your API uh, without whichever backend tools you want to use. So yes, you can do that. Um, can you put the links in that I shared? Yeah, I can put them in. Great. So um, the, the links are coming. Uh, the information about uh, task executions with APIs, uh, the information about distributing published tasks, and the information about creating entity reports and imprinting. Those are coming your way. Awesome. Right. Thank in you, the Jerry. chat. No we're getting a lot of questions as we're getting to the top of the hour, so we'll try to get all of them before 11. Um, Stefano has one in a follow-up. So is it possible to insert button in Trellis container in order, to have, in order to have a number of buttons dynamic? And then using advanced mode, question mark, was the follow-up? Oh, uh, I just tried it and uh, no. You can't uh, uh, trellis the button. It doesn't have any dimension or so it doesn't really. Uh, yeah. I, um, That's the it, face of defeat right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's not good at all. <laughs> well, Is it possible to add an expression yeah. into the title of each individual sheet of an app? Yes, you can have uh, expressions in the sheet title. Sorry, Katie, I nicked that. No, that's before. great. That's, thank you. So it is possible. Do you want to show us how? So, yeah, it's... Yeah. So if I do something like... Oh, here, let me stop. No. Share screen. And... and here's my... So here's the title, the static title, but you can also enter an expression for the title. And if you do that, my sheet. It's me, I can't write anything today like that. Uh, you will actually have a dynamic sheet title. So I think that was the question. It looks like Great. that was the question. Another question. So if there's any follow-ups, just let us know. Yeah. So there was something about uh, adding help or having adding some kind of, if you, is there a way if I stand on a title in a WIS table to see more info? For instance, title is win and when I can see more how to. Yeah, so there's a couple of things. Oh, I have to switch back from another theme. Uh, uh, so there is a way to do that. There is, um, Oh, let's do that first. So there's a like a hidden way to do this. If you add a, an object as a master visualization, and if you add details to it, it will actually show up as an as this information icon over here. If I go here and I do edit, the things that I put in the most details description will wind up here. So there you could this provide more details to the end user. Another way that I recommend people are doing if they want to add more descriptive text to the uh, to the app instead of just overloading the dashboard with everything. Just uh, use a container and have a second uh, tab for the help section. And then people, if they want to see help or they want to find out more information, then they can switch to that tab and you can have all kinds of information there. I think that's more elegant and that's uh, uh, easier for the user to understand. Uh, it doesn't cost that much. It's just to add an, the container and, uh, and a tab with uh, the text and image object and you can put everything uh, you want in here. Uh, another really way, great idea. Be, yeah. Another way would be to put uh, a button that could spawn a, 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 a like a, a secondary web page or something. But I like it to keep it uh, contained like this. Great, thank you. All right, I'm going to call that as the last question of the session because we have about five minutes left. Um, I'll share my screen to let you guys all know when our next session is. Um, January 11th, we'll get that up on community shortly, um, but block your calendars for this time again in January. We're gonna cover Click Gold Client Business Warehouse, which is one of our data integration features. I wanna thank everyone who joined the call today. Uh, thank you to our panelist experts. They were awesome. Um, thank you to Jamie who kept the ship running. <laughs> My internet blocked out. Um, reminder to complete the survey. You'll get, we, we do a swag drawing and we'll post that with the recording of who wins some of the, the best click gear. Um, any other closing remarks, Jamie? Well, that was really great. Thank you, everyone. Um, 
we do have a lot of links in the chat, so we'll just give you a, a minute here just to grab all those links. Um, I really want to call out Patrick's uh, visualization um, series that he's doing. Um, and Patrick is really great about sharing the apps that he's created with everyone. So please download those, get those installed, and, and play around with the visualizations. And if you have any more questions, you know, just post in the community, and everyone will, I'm sure, be able to help you out with that. So Great. thank you everyone for joining today. All, all right, we'll see you all one. next month. Happy holidays. We'll see you next Happy year. Holidays. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Great.